Hey, what's up? This is Max from CityMax7 and I'm here to make a tutorial on creating turntable in Keyshot. Now, this is a request from a friend and I'm going to teach you how to create a turntable in Keyshot. For this tutorial, I'm going to use 3ds Max and Keyshot. So, let's get started. For this tutorial, you might need to download this plugin for the Keyshot. Now this plugin allows you to send the model from your 3D application to Keyshot in just one click. You can download this plugin from Keyshot website, it's for free and I'm going to put the link in the description below. So now let's jump into 3ds Max and let's get started. Okay. This model I created which is a high poly version and before I send the model I want to make sure that my object is in group. Now it's not necessary but if you want to do animation into your model then it's really necessary. So for example, if I select my object over here, now this is a one group. If I go to my group and hit open and click on these fans, now this is a one group. And if I hit my E key for rotation and do some rotation over here, now this is going to be really useful when I bring this model into Keyshot and do some animation for the wings. So. Uh, let's get to the plugin. Now this is your plugin for the Keyshot 7 and if I hit the render button my selected models is going to be come into the Keyshot. So uh, I'm just going to send my model this which is just let me close the group and this is going to be selected version. So let's jump into the Keyshot 7 it just takes a little bit of time just to close this enough. Okay, here we go. Now let's go to the Keyshot 7 and hit the render button. But I'm not going to hit the render button right now because this will take a little bit of time. So I already put my model into the Keyshot. So let's jump into the Keyshot part right now. And here we are. So now you can see this model is over here in the key shot and I just applied a back background which is going to the environment and going all the way down and this is your back plate. The lighting I'm using is this one right now and I'm going to switch to my back plate again and for the scene I have this object over here which is in one group as you can see if I go and select my fans which should be there we are so these are my fans which I was talking about for the animation purposes and if you uh, might having issues with the uh, rendering purposes on real-time rendering in Keyshot so what you can do is go to lighting and go to the performance mode and this will makes a little bit faster for your PC okay so for the fan animation what I can do is go to select these fans and right click over here and go to animation and go to rotation. Now I want to apply this rotation for at least 5 seconds so what I can do is just type a value over here in the animation property. If it's not visible you can go to the windows and go to animation and this will pop out. Alright so let's go all the way down and I wanted to start my fans a little bit easier way and then go it in a constant way. So I'm going to apply the motion as in e ease in. And my animation will be around something like 6 seconds for right now I guess. And I'm going to hit the zero value over here. And just Okay it's milliseconds. Just want to make sure. There we go. So now this is going to start with the milliseconds of uh, zero, oh, sorry, uh, seconds of zero and end up is going to be with the six seconds. As you can see over here, just going to scroll down, here we go. So from zero to six seconds. And if I play my animation over here, we see way to go. Okay, this is going in the wrong direction right now actually. So what I'm going to do is switch my axis over here and give the axis something like maybe Z axis. And if I just scrub my animation over here, there we go. Now it's working. However, the fans are a little bit way too slow. So what I'm going to do is increase my degree something like maybe 1500, I guess. That would be great. 
so I'm going to go all the way back and hit the play button and there we go but it's a little bit faster so what I'm going to do is maybe just give the value something like 1000 that would be great I'm going to hit the there we go that's that's what I was looking for it so once we got this animation I can apply this animation same over here onto the back fans so I'm just going to close my group over here and go all the way down I'm just going to select just one fan over here and it will give me this this is the group so I can select this group and just right click and go to animation and go to rotation again and the same thing I can do over here so I'm just going to increase this all the way at the end and just the same value 1000 and in the z-axis and go with the ease in and if you look over here you can see this now for the bonus what I can give you the advice if you want to apply in your animation a little bit motion blur you can just turn on from over here and if you go over here you have the three uh, two options one is models parts and second is camera which you can apply to your models and parts in the motion blur and for the camera purposes you can apply over here so I'm going to just click over here and it becomes blue that means it's turned on so motion blur obviously you can't see the motion blur in, over here but just quickly to show you what I can do is just turn on my off my performance mode and switch to basic mode and what I'm going to do is just scroll back all the way and just give a little bit animation and pause it and just let me render it for two seconds as you can see the motion blur is coming out just to see the difference I'm going to turn off this again and switch it back and just play it and just stop it for two seconds as you can see there's a difference between before and after so I'm going to turn it this on again now once you applied the motion blur over here now you can switch to the turntable for the turntable what you need to do is apply a new camera so I'm going to comes over here says animation wizard and go these properties now these properties are more like uh, you can say presets over here and there are some you can apply to the presets more like to your model uh, models but what we're going to stick with the obviously for the camera animations so I'm going to come over here and if I switch to click on any button you can see the preview how the animation is going to work so which I'm looking for is the orbit and my obviously objects going to be still uh, in the center and my camera is going to be rotate however you can do the opposite way so you can switch to the, this turntable where your model is going to be turned around into 360 but for right now we're going to switch to the camera animation and the camera is going to be turned around into 360 so let's hit next and add the camera and you can name it I'm going to say turn TT for the turntable and hit next and yes I wanted to keep it 360 the motion ease is more like the camera is going to be start with very easily and then it goes constantly you can also apply ease in and out so which is quite good I say I'm going to apply the ease in and out and I want this frame for obviously start with the zero but I want to end this to six and that's great now it's perfect and I'm going to hit the apply the finish button now if you notice my camera uh, timeline is a little bit offset so I'm just going to bring this little bit back over here there we go now if I click this over here and before that I'm going to switch my performance mode and click on the play button and I can see the animation is looking nice now you can edit the camera if you don't feel comfortable with this uh, shot so you can switch to the camera mode and go to the TT and you can change the, something like distance and twist whatever you like what I'm looking for is right now something like let's say stay above the ground I don't want my camera goes to the ground 
and maybe the distance gets the value something like a little bit further so we can see it nicely there we go maybe something like 800 millimeters 8000 i guess yeah there we go so inclination is like you are taking your camera a little bit up uh, from the ground i want something like there we go it's better and this is for the rotation purposes and i'm going to go all the way over here and just hit type the value zero that's on the side view let's try 180 oops 90 there we go now it's on the center that's what i was looking for it and inflation would be around i guess three and rest looks fine so before that uh, playing on over here what i need to do is save the camera so i'm just click on the save button and lock this so i don't make any changes after that and hit the play and there we go it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward let's bring it over here around now uh, for the lighting obviously I need to switch something more like basics now if you want some high quality rendering you can switch to the product but that will increase your render time so just be aware all right once it's good now we can switch to the render and to render and coming to the render part uh, we're going to switch to the obviously on the animation and in here you can select what kind of a preset that you're looking for it uh, the size of the uh, animation you can uh, check to the entire duration and work area or frame range if you want to select the frame range I would recommend it to select the frame range uh, why I just let you know in a minute but before that you want to uncheck the video output we don't want that video output uh, it's not necessary but since uh, we are working in a digital world the computer can crash or maybe uh, the computer can stop or whatever it could be happen so we want to stick with the frames for right now and in here we want to give the path where we're going to save our animation over here and since my path is already set which is nice I'm going to stick with this one the format this is important if you're looking for the um, transparent background then you want to switch to TIFF but remember that that will increase your render time a little bit extra I'm going to switch JPEG for right now and over here you can give the name of the frames if you like it's going to be saved with something like untitled it uh, 1 and then 2 and 3 and 4 it's more like a JPEG sequence now this is going to be a frame output and below that you can switch to something like uh, render passes layers now these layers will comes in handy but you want to make some changes into your uh, output so you can check this something like diffuse um, something like global illumination shadows uh, reflections if you have the reflections over here I think I'm going to turn this off and great now important thing is that if something happens and your render gets stopped no need to worry about it if that happens then what you can do just check your last frame and then come back over here and give the frame something like let's say 50 let's say the last render was crashed on the 49 then you give the value of 50 and then you can see over here the frame score is going to be rendered continuously that means where it was break and now it want to uh, back in uh, render mode again so you want to go something like 50 and as you can see the render is going to be the frames is going to be something like 312 frames so this is going to be really handy when you uh, have uh, having issues with the software and it get crashed up so you can uh, recontinue uh, your renders again so for right now I'm going to hit the like zero I guess and it becomes one automatically which that's what I was looking for it and after that I'm going to check my something like 1024 uh, resolution for my render and once it's done then you can hit the render button 
Okay, here we are back again. Uh, I have just already completed my render and this is my render and these are my render files over here as you can see all the way to 361 and let me just show you some. So these are some quick renders and this is how it won. However, what I'm going to do is open in a composition software something like After Effects. So I'm just going to turn it on. Here we are. So I'm just going to double click in this project folder and what you want to make sure is just select one image and just make sure that import as a footage and import JPEG sequence and that's what we are looking for it. We want to make sure that this entire sequence comes into a one comp. It's more like a composition. So if you're into the After Effects, that's great. If you're not, let me know and make another tutorial for this. However, just selecting one image and hit the import and it will create a one single composition and with that what I can do is just click and drag it down over here which will make a composition for me and if I just hit the space bar and you can see it creates a turntable. However, let it uh, pass for one uh, single frame. As you can see, this green line, this is your cache, which is uh, more like a temporary memory, you can say. But it creates the preview that this is the animation is going to look like. Now, in the composite software, this gives you the flexibility that you can add a lot of things over here. Like, for example, if I just click over here and let's say maybe something like a color correction, I guess. And let's me look for auto color let's try auto color over here I'm just going to apply the auto color over here and I can set the values something between them maybe just uh, I'm, I'm not going to go with this one I guess so let's try something else maybe it's just a little bit color balance uh, I might need a little bit with the mid tones and a little bit adding a little bit red into it so you can play with this obviously it's up to you but I'm just learning out stuff I'm just click on this X button and maybe search for something like blur and sharpness and give me some smart blur so I want something in the focus so maybe just reduce the radius a little bit and then we can just play and there we go it just reduced the noise that was going on with that. After that, applying the little bit blur, I can use the sharpness. So, I can increase the value something like 25. And it's important that you keep your renders a little bit nice, crisp, sharp. So, I think 20 would be enough. Yeah, that's good. And I might decrease the threshold of the blur something like 15. And the mode is going to be edge only. Not that, sorry. There we go. Maybe try 10. Just wanted to reduce this noise of what's going on. So it happens because of the sampling. I can r increase the sampling, but that will increase the render time. So the cheapest way is to, uh, it's more like you just render out in a low quality and then just apply the blur and then apply the sharpness so this is more like a cheat you can say but it works sometimes so if I hit the space bar again and this is the preview now to render this what we can do is just select this image and go to our compositing and we want to make, uh, make sure that hit the add to render queue and once I hit that now you can select what kind of a setting you're looking for it obviously you can set up in your way I'm not going to go with this now I wanted to keep it lossless so it won't compress your image so keep it as lossless that would be great however we don't need the audio so I'm going to audio output as off and I'm going to hit OK and now the output where you're going to save the file this is important so I'm saving as a AVI format since I'm using the windows so I can save to my desktop I guess where is it where is it there we go and 
just name it output there we go and we can save as a in a subfolder if we want I like to keep it organized there we go and hit save and now we just hit the render button and it will render it it's a little bit time but as you can see the process all right here we are we're done with the rendering so let's go to the desktop all the way over here and here we are with the file if I click over here there's uh, AVI format and there we go nice clean render so that's it for this tutorial however if you like this uh, tutorial please like and subscribe and if you have any question please leave in the comment section below and thanks and have fun